On today's video, a Ferrari Testarossa barn find. This car was in need of a serious paint correction and that was our main focus, but the interior did hold a catastrophic secret, which we're gonna talk about later in the video. Welcome back to Status Detail, and today we have a 1989 Ferrari Testarossa and it's getting a major, major paint correction, ceramic coating, this overall awesome detail by Status Detail. And uh, the car, as you can see, has seen better days. The paint is in really rough shape. The car was found legitimately inside of a barn, had cobwebs on the inside, and there's lots of like bug etchings and bird etchings and all kinds of bad things going on in the paint. Lots of really deep scratches and a lot for us to dive into and, and kind of repair and bring back to life. Inside, there's a lot going on there as well. Um, as I mentioned, cobwebs, there's dust everywhere, and there's some other hidden secrets that we're going to get into uh, at the end of the video, as I mentioned in the intro, because it's kind of a can of worms that we're going to have to open at the end of the video. So this Ferrari does have Capristo exhaust on it. Capristo exhaust and Ferraris do go hand in hand. They're very, very common. Anytime we're doing an extremely in-depth detail on a car, especially like the one we're doing on this one, we're gonna start with the wheels. Um, this car does have some nice aftermarket wheels on it and the rubber on the back of the car was actually in decent shape. It looked relatively new. The fronts weren't as good, um, but anyways, we're using Brake Buster, we're using a foam cannon, we're using wheel woolies, and we're just kind of going to town. We're doing everything we can to kind of revive these things because the wheels actually are in pretty good condition. They're relatively new, uh, but they do have a lot of dirt on them and they didn't look like they had been cleaned uh, recently. The barrels especially were very, very dirty. But as you can see, once they are rinsed off, they do look pretty, pretty good. So. We do more work on the wheels later in the detail. They get ceramic coated and everything, um, but really 90% of the hard work was done uh, during this process. So once we get to the rinse stage, we're basically just trying to get as much off with our pressure washer here because there is a lot of contamination on the car and there was a lot of like etchings and things and it's often possible to kind of pressure wash some of that stuff off. What doesn't come off typically can get emulsified by the foam. Uh, that's why we like to foam cars because it really loosens dirt and if things have been on the car for a long time that are kind of like dry or they're kind of rotting into the paint, some of that stuff can be loosened greatly by a foam cannon. You'll notice here that I'm using a microfiber um, like towel to wash the car and not my typical wash pad that I always talk about. And that's because I use that wash pad on the Bugatti, on the P1, on the Wyra, on 911s and GT2s and GT3s and Tourings and all kinds of crazy cars. I keep that pad really, really clean so I can make sure I can keep those cars swirl free. So when I work on a car that's a barn find that's a disaster, I use a normal towel like that. It's really an interchangeable process in my opinion. You just need to keep the surface of that clean so you can take that pressure wash the surface out and then keep going and you're not gonna run into any issues scratching the car. But if we're being honest with each other, this car was so destroyed that there was no way I could possibly do any more damage to it. We just needed to get the top layer of dirt off. Adding more scratches into it was not a factor. However, the way I did wash this car was safe and did not add any scratches into it. Speaking of scratches, <laughs> check those out. So we're dealing with some heavy, heavy swirl marks on this car. I mean, we're talking swirl marks so bad that we almost can't tell the car is black under a light. Like there's so much oxidation and so much of a swirl mark that we're just getting kind of this white plume of light coming off the car where typically we wanna see a really, really crisp light coming off with black paint around it. Um, kind of like in that intro when you saw the Ferrari and it was all black and perfect. This looks like it's gray, almost white. So obviously we have some major, major paint correction ahead of us because this is about as bad as it gets, probably a nine out of 10. So I paint corrected this car in a really unique way. And this is why we like to say it's bespoke detailing because every car's paint and every car's situation and the situation that this car was in a barn makes for a unique correction process because we need to remove some really bad stuff on the car. We need to remove some serious amounts of paint to level down to the good stuff because there's good paint underneath all that bad paint. And I'm using a pad that I usually use. This is an HDO blue pad. I'm using Rupes blue compound and I don't typically use that. I love ultra cut. I always use ultra cut for um, compounding. When I say always, I mean like 80% of the time. Now, in this case, that product works the way I need it to work for this car's paint. This is an 89. Typically, uh, in that era, there could be a potential 
uh, possibility for the car to be single stage paint. This is not single stage paint, it's multi-layer, which means it has clear coat. And these early generation clear coat cars um, can behave a little different than the clear coat that we see on cars today. But obviously a lot of time has passed between then. So the type of paint correction process that I used on this car is kind of matched a little to those. And because this Ferrari has really, really soft paint, I'm doing a process that I'm working really slow in the beginning with this compound and I'm building a lot of heat with it. So you'll see I spread the product on kind of quick, but then I slow down a lot. I'm slowing down because I'm letting the product work into the panel and I'm building heat into the pad. Typically, you don't want to build heat into the pad because it can be bad for it, but also it can be really bad for the paint because heating up the panel too much can be bad for it. But when you're working on this older paint like this, heating the paint up can actually kind of make it swell and it kind of levels out and it kind of uh, helps just extract imperfections like bird droppings or, or bug droppings that are in the paint that have etched into it. So it's kind of like a double whammy where the compound's eating into the paint to get rid of stuff, but we're also heating it up. Um, and this is just one of those things where this is just a unique process that we're doing on this car. Now, another unique thing I'm doing, and I, I, you guys mentioned in some of my comments, you know, you're giving away all your secrets. And I've even made a video about how I keep some things, you know, private. I don't give away all my secrets. One of those things is that I'm using a hard pad. The HDO blue pad is a hard, stiff pad, but I actually softened this pad. So this pad's a little softer than it's supposed to be. We're gonna keep that a trade secret. But because I made a hard pad soft and I'm using the technique that I'm using with the product that I don't typically use, I'm actually getting an incredible paint correction process out of um, the soft paint on a Ferrari because Ferraris have soft paint. Typically when you correct a soft paint with a compound doing a similar process to what I'm doing, you end up with a lot of haze in the paint and then you have to polish afterwards. Now I did polish this car after compounding it, but I didn't necessarily have to. And we're gonna talk more about that in a second. But you'll see, I did compound the car two times and the result is compound dust. And that's pretty unavoidable. And it's one of the reasons I don't like using this roof as compound. It's because it dusts a lot, like you're seeing. But we're gonna put up with that dust because the correction that we got was exactly what we needed. So sometimes you'll put up with the product and the dust that you don't wanna use because we got the correction we wanted to get on a unique car. Now we're using a three inch rotary here to do some stuff and we did use a one and two inch pad on certain areas, but I did not film that. Um, some of this stuff becomes pretty cumbersome to film when you're doing so many different shots and different angles while you're doing so much work. Um, interestingly enough, these little slats on the sides of the doors we actually did with our Rupa S21 because it was the easiest way to get in there. And uh, basically the, the, the smaller polishers I have just flat out don't fit in here. So we actually needed the width of the pad on a 21 inch uh, to get in there. Let's get back to that polishing talk. So this is the polishing phase. Now this is technically for this car a jeweling step and I'm using CarPro Reflect with an orange HDO pad and basically I'm doing this really really slowly. So in most of the shots you're going to see here I'm working very 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 slowly. So I do this two times as well. So I polish the car four times total in terms of stages and this step is basically going after the last 10%. So because I did that unique compound step where I said I didn't really get a lot of haze, most people would have looked at the car and said, wow, that's like 100% perfect. Like you really knocked that out of the park. But to me, that would only be 90% perfect because we go for you know perfection and I'm a paint correction specialist. So especially in this shot, you're gonna see I'm working a little slower now. So because I know that last 10% is on the car and this is the kind of car um, that we would do this kind of detail on, we're going for 100% or 98% or whatever we can pull out of it. And that means even though I know that that correct that compound step I did basically got it perfect, that I can get more with this, so we're doing it. And this is basically a slow polishing step with Reflect. It's very tedious. So you can see when you're working so slow and you're doing that twice, it really kind of eats a lot of your time up. And I spent another about a half a day just doing this. And a lot of people would see this as crazy, especially businesses, because they wouldn't see a return on investment, basically. But in that video recently that I made, this is the stuff where my customer might not see it, but I see it and I'm fixing it so I make it perfect. And that makes the customer know that, you know, even if I wasn't going to see it, Evan saw it and he made sure it was perfect. And that's a big part of what status detail is. It's a trust between the customer and me knowing that I'm doing it right and I'm not skipping any steps. And in this shot, you can really kind of see I'm dialing this in, right? So this is that jeweling step. So I, I spread that product on, now I'm taking it off. And you can see the depth and the gloss coming out behind that polisher 
is really, really remarkable. And you have to remember too, we haven't ceramic coated the car yet. This is gloss only from the paint correction phase. This shot really shows the orange peel or more like the lack of orange peel. So this car was refined from Ferrari to a level that really makes it great. And the process that I did to the car leveled it out a little bit more and just made the clarity really, really good. And you can really see how there is very little orange peel. Now the headlight cover on the left has a little bit of orange peel in it. And to the right is the hood and that has very, very little orange peel in it. So when you see the contrast between those two, you can really see the orange peel versus no orange peel. And this is why I'm so crazy about PPF. Um, but that's a different conversation. So you'll see how glossy the car is now. And what's insane to understand is there's no ceramic on the car yet. This is simply just from the gloss that came from paint correction and from the jeweling step. So your ceramic coating is only ever as good as your prep. And that's why prep is like 90% of the battle of ceramic coating a car. The ceramic will make it more glossy, but the ceramic's gonna just lock everything in. It's locking all that paint correction work in for seven years and making it really hard to undo it. So remember, ceramic coatings are great, but the prep work that goes in before your ceramic coating, that's the most important stuff. That's the real magic. And that's why you need to find a paint correction specialist who can really dial in the car, then ceramic coat it. We also did a little work real fast on that Capristo exhaust on the tips because why not? We gotta make sure those suckers are polished up. Ceramic was basically one of the last steps we had to do. And I believe this is the top coat going on. So this is G-Technic EXO. And I love putting EXO on cars. It's always an option, but I love doing it. And I love recommending this step to customers because it gives a lot of flexibility during maintenance. And I always tell customers that and I've never put it in a video. So I wanted to mention it in this video. This basically gives us a system where in a year or six months from now, but probably more like a year, if the car came in and needed a maintenance detail, which it would because we do them every year, say the car's got a little bit of swirl marks in it, real light, nothing crazy. We can lightly polish the entire car, effectively remove EXO and then reapply it. And then the car is back to basically brand new. The base coat barely gets affected if anything gets affected and it's extremely cost effective. And I always talk about PPF as a value-based game. And guess what guys, ceramic is the, no different. Ceramic is a value-based thing. And if I can save you guys money doing something, but also give you lots of value by like increasing the way your car looks from one level to a next level, like bumping up a notch, but keeping the price low, that's something that we should all be interested in because we're all winning in that case. And EXO allows us that flexibility during a maintenance detail to do an extra step of polish if we want to, but not be concerned that we're really wiping out the ceramic underneath. And for that reason alone, you should be doing EXO on your car. Besides that, you are getting a more hydrophobic car, which means more self-cleaning effect, and you're also getting more gloss. Um, it also adds durability to it but durability is usually not a factor for most people who do uh, coatings for us anyway, because most of our customers won't keep a car for seven years. All right, so you guys are all wondering what's going on with that interior. You kept mentioning it and you didn't want to tell us and you waited until 13 minutes into the video to tell us what's going on with the interior. So the car was really musty when we got in it. We actually drove this car and I was gonna film the drive over to the shop, but because the car smelled so bad, and it was raining and the alignment was kind of weird so the car didn't drive straight it was a little sketchy to drive so i just wanted to focus and not crash this thing so when i got into the shop we did all this work and the last thing i was going to do was the interior and you can see when i pull the carpet up there's some white stuff underneath there and there was some white stuff on the side of the seat and the more i did on the inside of the car i started to peek into some spots and get curious and i ended up finding a lot of mold like a lot a lot not just a little bit like 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 to the level where i probably needed to wear like a mild hazmat suit and wear a respirator kind of mold and uh, at that point we had to tell the customer like hey you know we were this was not disclosed um i needed to know about this kind of stuff like we don't do these kinds of details i don't do mold removal um i'm even touching the seat here because i'm like hey what's going on with this seat and this is uh, uh just kind of uh happened on camera i wasn't planning that or anything um, the seat is super hard, like the leather is really, really, really hard. Um, and that usually happens when leather absorbs a lot of moisture and it gets hard like plastic. So uh, we had to stop working on the car at that point. The outside was done, but the inside did not get complete. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it was a pretty catastrophic uh, thing for us to find that, alar that alarming amount of, um, 
mold inside of it. Regardless of all of that stuff happening, we do have a very shiny Testarossa on the exterior. It really came together nicely and it really came out great. I really truly believe in that jeweling step. I think that what you're looking at right now with that intense, amazing gloss, that 10% matters to me. I think it's a huge deal and you guys can see how great the car looks. And I, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the process of seeing this car go from like in really rough shape to a really great shape ex for the exception of the interior, which obviously we uh, were not able to work on. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you guys have any questions for me, definitely drop me a comment below because I'm known for making very long responses on YouTube. I, I love interacting with you guys. And if you ask me especially a good question, I'm going to give you a really in-depth answer. I make videos and release them every single Sunday. So if this is the first time you're seeing a status detail video and you're into detailing videos, then definitely check out the other stuff on my channel. We have really cool videos on a Bugatti Chiron, McLaren P1, Pagani Huayra, McLaren Senna, Porsche 918 Spider, and I could go on. There are so many cool videos that you guys might like. So if you're into detailing videos, I think you're in the right place. Just check out the videos on our channel. I'll definitely see you guys in the next video.